Uh, my name is Justin Yeager. I'm from Tulane University. I'm a PhD student in the program Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. So these poison frogs, poison frogs are charismatic overall, and so people really like these brightly colored frogs. And in particular in this area, there's a really high diversity of colors and color patterns that are different. And the neat thing about this area too is it's all geographically kind of correlated. So you have different islands that are correlated with different colors, as well as you see in the mainland too, some of that also mirrors that you have this diversity of different populations. And kind of the question that we have in a lot of us is why? Uh, kind of the question that drives most of science, but in this case we have frogs with so many different colors and they're brightly colored for a reason. And that reason in part is for female preferences, for female sexual selection, and then the other part is an advertisement because they're toxic. They have these skin alkaloids that are defense against potential predators. So we ask why, and we're working on trying to answer some of those questions. Essentially what this does is you have a light source uh, here and then the processor for the spectral reflectance. Uh, so this machine essentially is a uh, thoroughly portable uh, spectrometer, spectrophotometer as you wish to call it. Um, you get a reading here, so essentially the light shines out um, and then it's reflected back off the skin of whatever you are looking at or the background material. Uh, I just have a spacer here with a 45 degree angle so uh, kind of avoids uh, noise from the reflectance of wet amphibian skin. And essentially this light just shines out through fibers that are surrounding the center which is where it reads from and all of this is very tiny. You might not even be able to see it with that. And uh, you get a curve then, a reflectance curve, which is essentially looking at... Uh, let's turn it on first. Um, and so basically it's collecting um, photon reflectance uh, for different spectra. And you can collect, this particular one can do in ultraviolet as well as uh, straight through the visible spectrum. So essentially the readouts you get are each of these. And so you'll get 2,000 data points for uh, reading. Um, so these, we have silicon molds um, that are completely all food safe. Um, and then we melt clay in crock pot and just kind of slather it into these molds, cool it down with ice, and then pop them out. And so these are ones that have actually already been in the field, some of which were attacked. So this is a bird attack. major focus of mine right now is looking at how habitat disturbance and in particular uh, anthropogenic land use uh, can affect the toxicity and the coloration and the signal kind of combined, uh, how they can affect the signal on kind of a fine scale approach looking at heavily disturbed versus non-disturbed areas. With the clay models, um, it's just a very simple way to ask a question of what's being avoided the most. Um, the attacks you have you know, these images of. Um, and you can look at them then, and it's just a very simple way to say, to look at this and say, what is attacked the most, what is avoided the most, because the avoidance is actually uh, the part that's most interesting to us. Um, and then with that, you can just say, do they attack different proportions of the body? Are they attacking the head disproportionately more than the rest of the body? And other species that are chemically defended that are toxic, they found directional attacks towards certain areas. And so we're seeing, you know, are they trying to take out the head first and have a quick kill or see if there's direction towards the attacks? very difficult to measure the predation because predation rates are very, very low here. Um, the habitat may not be the same as what initially drove the divergence, um, and the species composition might be different too. So it was, we found, we have some answers to our questions, but at the same time, it's been very difficult to say, you know, this is exactly what's going on. I think this is what caused you know, this one to be red and this one to be blue, for example. What have you found so far? Ooh, well, that will be coming out in future publications in the next few years.